What is going on, everybody? Episode 66 at the Trainwreck Podcast. Order 66 is here, baby. I'm here with Drew. Zach will be joining us a little bit later once he gets off work. We will predict week five of the NFL season and review week four, the uh, trash fire that that was. But, Drew, how are you doing today, buddy? Doing okay, doing okay. What about you? I'm doing all right, dude. I, um, I'm extremely tired, so... Last night, I was uh, sitting in this chair right here playing video games, playing uh, some NCAA football, just being a beast, you know? And uh, I heard some sirens going off, and then I heard a bunch of sirens going off, dude. And I was like, usually when that happens, I'm kind of like, I want to go check it out. I know that's a stupid thing to do, but when I hear a bunch of sirens, I'm always like, man, something good's got to be happening. I kind of want to go check this out. And um, so I have this app on my phone. It's called Drive Oklahoma. And it will show you, like, traffic cams and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if you've ever used this app. I yeah. use it a lot. I use it a lot for my job. That way I can, like, scout ahead and see if there's, like, any wrecks on the highway and stuff like that. It's a really cool app. Well, so I look on that app and I see that they're all um, – all turning down our street, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, huh, that means it's in our neighborhood. And I, you know, I got these towels and stuff on this window. So I don't see like any like flashing lights or anything. And I go outside. I'm like, I'm going to get in my car and go see what's going on. Well, I step outside. I don't have to get in my car because there's a dude in my neighbor's yard and he's banging on the door trying to wake him up because this was at like 1030 last night. And I go, hey, man, what are you doing? And the reason I said that is because our neighbor's dog has bit somebody before. Yeah, and I didn't want that dude to get bit. And I went, get the fuck out of his yard. And he goes, hey, the house behind you guys is on fire. And I'm like, what? And he then uh, my neighbor comes out and goes, what's going on? And the guy goes, the house behind you is on fire. And I'm like, what the hell? And so, you know, from the front of my house, you can't see it at all. Yeah. And then so I go in my backyard and then I can see the house on fire. And the dude uh, was like, oh, man, it's starting to spread. It started, like, getting on the grass and stuff. So we were in my neighbor's backyard, and we started feeding his hose through the gate and turned the water on to try to spray the grass to stop it from spreading. Well, in this house, I guess they had fireworks, and once the flames started getting high, fireworks started shooting out the house. Like, a lot of fireworks. Oh, God. Yeah. And so now I'm like really fucking scared that this thing's about to start spreading with them having fireworks and stuff. And so, you know, my neighbor and that other dude, I never caught his name. Um, they were, you know, doing their thing with the hose. I ran inside my house to grab our fire extinguisher because the hose I have in my backyard wasn't long enough. So I was like, next best thing, fire extinguisher. And Right in between me and my neighbor's house in our backyard is a giant tree. And yeah. luckily, the fireworks did not get that tree. But it was uh, it was pretty crazy, dude. And so I kind of like, which I guess this wouldn't have worked, uh, talking to my dad about it. Because my dad's a firefighter. So I talked to him about it this morning. Uh, I did take our fire extinguisher and I like pre-sprayed the tree, like <laughs> just in case anything like sprayed onto it, you know, and then I kind of leaned it over the fence and tried to spray the grass for as far as it would reach, you know? Yeah. That's like drooling going. You don't really think you just, you just do. Yeah. But I got this video on my phone. I'll share it for you guys real quick. If I can uh, share my screen. So this was uh, in my backyard at the house. And it's kind of hard to see because my neighbor has a shed that's blocking it. But the house, it, it got fucked up, dude. Yeah. But, and so we ended up having, I counted like 13 emergency vehicles. And our road's not that big, dude. 
Yeah, it's not that big at all. Yeah, and so they took up everything. There was no like, there was no walking room at all, uh, let alone driving room. <laughs> and uh, they ended up saying, from what I said or from what I seen, that it was an electrical fire. And the thing is, with um, especially in our neighborhood where there's a lot of crackheads, you know, yeah. everyone's like. I saw a dude running, you know, it was arson, you know, and it's like, okay, I'm not going to believe you because you're obviously a fucking crackhead, you know, and uh, then I saw on our town's Facebook page because they created a GoFundMe for the family that it was an electrical fire. Yeah. But so that was at like 1030 last night. I ended up talking with the cops and the firemen and the news until like 1 a.m., and then uh, didn't calm down till like 3 a.m. And I finally fell asleep and then got woke up at 7 this morning. <laughs> so that was my night last night. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting night. I was just like passed the fuck out while all that was happening. Yeah. Uh, you know what the thing was? Like my mom was asleep and I tried to wake her up to let her know what was going on. The woman did not wake up at all. <laughs> I was like, mom, mom. And I was like, the house behind us is on fire. Mom. She did not wake up. <laughs> and I was just like, fuck it. I'm like, if this thing spreads to us, then I'll fucking carry her ass out of here. But for now, I think we're all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, definitely fucking scary. Best, definitely the closest I've ever been to a fire. Um, I mean, one time I set my kitchen on fire using too much cooking oil, but that wasn't like that big of a fire on the grand scheme of things. And then I remember one time at the store we used to work out at work, the store we used to work at, a trash can caught on fire, and I actually put that one out. Yeah, and uh, ended up getting in trouble with. Well, the guy at Subway is a fucking bitch because. Uh, the thing was on fire, and so I ran in Subway, and I filled up a large cup. I just ran to the counter and grabbed it and filled it up with water and fucking threw it outside. And then the guy later was like, hey, you didn't pay for that water. And I told him, like, suck my fucking dick. He was like, yeah, there's a fire. It's like, there's a lot more things to worry about than a damn fucking, fucking cup of water. You know who it was? Is it? Is it? Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I was well, like, dude, you're su- was. I'm like, you're such a fucking loser. I'm like, <laughs> you're worried. Hey, you know, most places you go, water's fucking free, right? I'm sorry I cost you guys 20 cents on this fucking plastic cup. That's why that dude's a fucking bitch. Yeah, I experienced one like house fire. Really? And was it was my house? dad. No, it was not my mom's house. It was my dad's house back in the day. <laughs> and it, it's it's pretty devastating. So it was awesome prayers for the family. Yeah, I mean, I hear stories about it a lot because, like, so my dad's a firefighter, but um, you know, I've never been out on a call with him, you know. And I mean, most of the time, especially in like you know a small town where he is, and a small town like us. We really don't have that many fires, and if we do, it's like grass fires, you know? It's not house yeah. fires. Um, most of the time, like like with my dad, they get called for, like, accidents, you know, like car accidents and, like, lift assist. Uh, I'm but they sure also that's, have... like, the first house fire since we were kids in this what? neighborhood. I think that's the first yeah, house fire since we were kids. In this neighborhood, at least. I know... Um, over on Cherokee Street, over by that trailer park, you know, yeah, um, there was a house fire like two or three years ago because I was I was out. Uh, it was late at night, and I was going to McDonald's. And as I was leaving McDonald's, I saw a shitload of fire trucks started p- speeding past. And once again, because I'm an idiot, <laughs> I was like. I'm going to go check this out. And uh, yeah, there was a house fire out there um, over by the old police station and all that. And I remember seeing that, but you know, that wasn't basically in my fucking backyard. (laughs) 
Um, and then there was a house fire. Not gonna lie, you kind of got lucky because it can get rain like days before. So that grass is still kind of moist. Yeah, that's true. Well, hell, it rained a shitload um, last week. It rained yeah. for like, what, three days straight? Yeah. Yeah. So we that's don't have to use the dry ground that we usually have. Yeah, that's a good point. Because that grass was getting on fire. And I don't think it would have got to my backyard, but I was definitely worried about getting into the shed uh, directly behind my house in my you know, the people that live behind me. I was yeah. worried about again to him, to them, and uh, the guy next to me. They both have sheds, and that's what I was kind of worried about. Um, and, and that tree, if it would have got that tree, uh, that would have been a problem, oh. or the or that power pole because there's a power pole right next to it too. Yeah, we'll get that tree. It'd have been pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, I would have been there with the fire extinguisher at least, but. I don't know. It's still, um, I mean, you can't predict what's going to happen, you know? No, you can't. Yeah. So, I don't know, dude. I, I'm just fucking wore out from it, dude. Like, I told you, I did take a nap, like, at three today. Thank God I did not have work today um, with how late I was up and all that. And I'm kind of sore because I, I did a shitload of running, you know? Like, yeah. And, you know, sh shit like that just puts a strain on your body. Um, yeah, so I'm just sore today and all that. So I was really glad I didn't have work. I was kind of worried I was going to get called into work because the fair's in town and everybody's calling in, you know, to go to Dude, the fair. Dude, I can fucking imagine how busy your store is right now. Uh, we're not that bad because there's a Walmart right across from the fair. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one more. <laughs> yeah. Group to those guys. Yeah, so we haven't really been that bad, actually. Uh, traffic has kind of sucked because uh, less than a mile away from us, there's this big open field, and that's where they're keeping all the trailers for the livestock. So that kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. But other than that, like, business-wise, it hasn't been that bad. But tomorrow's the first, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought I was going to get called into work this morning because of the fucking fair, but uh, it didn't happen, thank God, and I was able to just, I didn't do shit today, you know, I just went and got something to drink, got something to eat, and I haven't left my house since. Shit, I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> yeah, I thought about I thought about going to the fair today just because a corn dog sounds really fucking good. You know, those, those fair corn dogs are so good. And uh, last year I had this ribeye steak sandwich uh, from one of the places at the fair is really good. Yeah. Um, but, you know, everybody works today, you know, and I was like, hey, am I really going to go by myself? You know, um, yeah, I might go to the fair tomorrow, actually, because uh, Jackson Dean, I don't know if you know him, he's a country singer. Uh, he's going to be performing at the fair tomorrow, and I kind of want to go see that. Cause oh, he is he song. really? Yeah, he has a song I really like, so yeah, yeah. I want to go see him. But I flashed this on the screen earlier. This is what the house looked like this morning. Damn, you could literally see through. Yeah. See right there, man. Um, yeah, um, the front of the house looks fine, but that yeah, that back side is destroyed. And I hope to have like some like insurance, like <laughs> oh man, I feel bad yeah. for them. But uh, from depressing news, let's get to more depressing news. <laughs> um, Dikembe Mutombo and Pete Rose both died today. Uh, Dikembe Mutombo, I think it was 59. Pete Rose, I think it was 82. Uh, Dikembe Mutombo died from brain cancer, which I did not know he had. I have a feeling that was being kept private. Uh, Pete Rose, this news just broke an hour ago, so we don't know what he died from yet, but he was also 82, so could have been a number of things. Yeah. Um, Dikembe Mutombo, you know, I I never got to watch him play basketball, but his commercial was funny as fuck, you know, the not in my house, you know. Yeah. Uh, was that for Geico? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I believe it was Geico. But like I said, I never, uh, 
I never got to see him play, but I always thought he was cool as shit. Uh, Pete Rose, another guy, never saw him play. I'm not that into baseball, you know. Like I know baseball. I know Pete Rose is the all-time hits leader. I know his scandal with betting on his team, even though he denies it, and how it's led to him being uh, ostracized from getting into the Baseball Hall of Fame. And uh, the thing that's kind of stupid now is now that he's dead, he'll probably get in the Hall of Fame. It's so stupid. Yeah. Yeah, so that was the news that broke today. Um, like I said, I don't see a cause of death. Uh, Pete Rose was 83, actually, not 82. Uh, one thing, though, Pete Rose did have a run in WWE. He got tombstoned by Kane at, like, three straight WrestleManias. I don't know if you had ever seen seen that before. No, yeah, now you mentioned I do remember. Yeah. Um, I remember when they did those therapy segments with uh, Daniel Bryan and Kane. Kane would say, and for some reason, I have an unhealthy obsession with Pete Rose. And then uh, they would show like him tombstoning Pete, you know. We've talked about depressing shit. Let's talk about something happy. You get a blowjob recently? We're currently working on it. Okay. So, <laughs> so from, from what I know from this bakery girl I've been telling you about. Yeah. Kaylin's Kaylin, my friend. Mm -hmm. She's been telling me that she's really hitting on me. So I was like, Yeah. I might have a fucking chance. Yeah. 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 My man. You better get it. You better video it. Send me it. Yeah! 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 Oh, you fucking know I'll, I'll fucking post in the group chat. Just <laughs> rub on Adam's face. Yeah. I'm proud of you if you do. <laughs> that fucking bum ass. Who oh, need women to be happy? Oh, God. Meanwhile, talks about that one chick uh, yesterday. Dude, I was just fucking shocked. He actually had a likes a woman that doesn't yeah, have a no, penis. Me too. I know. I was kind of getting a happy tent uh, when we started talking about all the girls that were hotter than her. I was like, God, there's so many hot women in the world. He did not fucking mention no hentai, no 2D chicks. No. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that was Adam. No. I think he was hacked. Definitely. Yeah. But, yeah, once, like I said, once we started listing off all the girls that were hotter than the one he shared, it made me just realize how many beautiful women there all are in the world. And, guys, it's not worth it to obsess over one bitch because there's always another. Oh, real. Yep. That being said, I do miss you, baby. Uh, <laughs> please take me back. <laughs> Nah, I've been on a dry spell lately. Um, a lot of it's just not being interested in dealing with women and their bullshit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, fuck, is this 30 seconds of fun going to be worth the two weeks of bullshit I got to put up with? <laughs> Wait, it's fucking two minutes of a fucking good time worth some fucking trouble. What the fuck are you doing setting these high expectations by going two minutes? <laughs> Piece of shit. Ruin it for the rest of us, you fucking bitch. <laughs> Whatever, fellas. Two inches is enough. I may be hung like a fire ant, but I'll make you itch the next day. <laughs> it might uh, be STD. It might be done. Have we gotten flagged yet? <laughs> no, nah, just mentioned the other episodes, maybe. Yeah, let's talk about Donald. I'll get us flagged. <laughs> now, never mind. <laughs> um, now nah, let's. Uh, now I'm gonna have to go in and fucking censor because as soon as I say that, it'll automatically flag it. Since, uh, oh yeah, most definitely. That's what happened a couple weeks ago when you 
you played that video of that chick or dude, wherever the fuck they were freaking out. I, as soon as I listened to it back and they said his name is president of the United States, I was like, fuck, that's what got us. <laughs> so dumb. Uh, ooh, here's a clip I need to uh, start using for the show once it uploads. Because, yeah, I did have to delete that clip just so we wouldn't use it again. Yeah. I need to delete some of these clips because that Cowboys video is kind of irrelevant. That This one's kind of relevant now. First down. Oh, ball came out of his hand. Fumble. That is a fumble. And it is scoop. I have so to just a... be honest with you. I don't know how the fuck we beat Cleveland. Well, I didn't I know either. Because they, they, they've had Deshaun Weinstein. If that yeah. other quarterback, they would have won. I'm being real with you. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean Watson on that last play when he got sacked, he he did he just looked fucking lost out there, you know. Like if that's Mahomes, if that's Dak, if that's anybody, they would have got that fucking ball off. Yeah. But yeah, let's get into your guys' game. We'll talk about mine here in a second, but yours is more recent, so uh, Deshaun Watson did actually have a decent game, uh, 24 for 32, 176 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Um, Amari Cooper, Jerry Judy were the leading receivers. But let's get into uh, Gardner mid shoe. 14 to 24, 130 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, got sacked twice. Uh, did he fumble? No, but Samir White did. Um, no Devontae Adams, so Jacoby Myers was your guys' leading receiver, but not by much because Trey Tucker was right behind him. Uh, both of them had five catches. Myers had 49 yards. Tucker had 41. Madison had five carries for 60 yards, which is 12 less carries than Zamir White, and Madison still had 10 more yards than him. Yeah, so it seems like we need to roll with Madison as our lead back right now. Yeah, Samir White sucks. He hasn't been good at all in this lead uh, role so far this season. Says a lead back, he's not good, but as a second stringer, I think he's a really good second stringer, though. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I think we need to roll Madison as a lead back because he's actually been playing pretty good this year. It's just surprising because he fucking sucked in Minnesota last year. Yeah, that, that, that is kind of shocking, too. And this just should be evidence that we need a bench mid, mid shoot and start AOC. Yeah. Um, so what, you guys, what, would, what would we have to lose? Yeah. So who do you guys have next? The Broncos. Ooh. Yeah, they actually have a real good defense right now. Yeah, I mean, hell, they stopped the Jets, and no offense, but the Jets' offense is better than your guys's. I know. Even Rogers will learn something from Midshoe. Yeah. I'm just glad that uh, Bo Nix showed Aaron Rodgers how the job's done. <laughs> and also, speaking of the Jets, I feel like we really need to push the trade Adams. Yeah, because, I mean, the Jets have no fucking leverage. Yeah, like, you guys can bend them over with this trade if you guys pull it over, because the Jets have absolutely no leverage. Yeah, like, if anything, we, like, Aaron Rodgers in that team will, was, like, a, give us a big favor for that trade. Like, I definitely, you guys can definitely at least get a first. It'll probably be, you know, a lower, a first, lower first. Like, the most realistic... First. Of it, probably like a first and the second round. Yeah, because I don't think they owe any more picks to Green Bay for the Rodgers trade. I don't think so. They should have the draft capital. You guys could get one, maybe two first round picks and definitely get a second round pick out of them. Yeah. It's like, so, we should, yeah. the there's no point keeping abs anymore because he's not really like being the dominant. You guys aren't going to the playoffs. Yeah, no, we're not going to play Austin. No, hell no. Yeah, because, I mean, Kansas City's undefeated. And, uh, oh, my God, Jared Goff just caught a touchdown. 
Sorry. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Amon Ross St. Brown <laughs> threw it. Seven yard touchdown catch for Jared Goff. Oh my God. I wish I could show this right now. It's the Philly special, basically. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, but yeah, you guys aren't going to the playoffs, so you might as well get Devontae Adams. You know, you might as well just trade him now while you guys can get something out of him instead of having him leave and not get anything out, out of him because his contract expires, like, what, next year? I believe so. Yeah, so just try to get that draft capital now. Yeah. And help build your team for the future because Kansas City's undefeated. The Chargers look way better than expected. Uh, you guys are at least better than the Broncos, kind of. Uh, you guys might lose to them this week, but you guys will probably finish with a better record. But then again, if you guys get Max Crosby back, I'd be a little scared for Bo Nix this week. Bo Nix about to get boned. Yeah. Have you seen Brandon, Brandon Perna talking about how he has a boner for Bo Nix? Yeah. All right, let's get into uh, a good football team. How about him, Cowboy? We won Thursday night football against Danny Diapers and the New York Giants. It was uh, an ugly, ugly game. And um, Dak Prescott did have a great game, 22-27, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, the running game still fucking sucks. 23 carries for 80 yards, 3.5 yards a carry as a team. Um, hell, it got so bad we were starting to put C.D. Lamb in the backfield because he's our best receiver and he might be our best running back too. Because <laughs> give that Devo roll. I mean, Rico, you know, 4.2 yards a carry. It's not that bad, but his longest carry was nine yards. You know, uh, Zeke still sucks. Um, C.D. Lamb had a really good game for himself. Seven catches, 96 yards, and a touchdown. Pretty much caught every ball that was thrown to him. Uh, Rico Daddle took a screen pass to the house. Uh, our run defense did good, but that's not saying much because Devin Singletary fucking sucks. Uh, yeah. and also sucks Mike Zimmer because Malik Neighbor, 12 catches, 115 yards, and... A lot of that was when Trayvon Diggs was not covering him. I don't get how you have one of the best corners in the NFL and you don't put him on that team's best receiver. Like, it was against this dude from the practice squad, Booth, number 25. He sucks. Um, they had him. Yeah, I was watching. It's like you, there, He was playing a lot of zone. Yeah, that was the other thing. Yeah, we played a shitload of zone because, I mean, on that uh, first drive when it was, like, third down, we just played a fucking soft zone, and Malik Neighbors was wide open, and he got, like, a 40-yard gain, you know? Yeah. That fucking pissed me off, and it kind of set the tone for the game where I'm like, uh, I thought we were going to lose after that. Like, but like I said, the Giants weren't able to get a running game going. Uh, Danny Diapers still fucking sucks. Um. But, dude, this defense. I mean, you don't get to play the Giants every fucking week, you know? Yeah. And this defense still fucking sucks. I want Mike Zimmer fired. And this would have been the week to fire him since we got a, a long week. You know, we don't play till Sunday. We take on the Steelers next, which at least we face another bad offense at least. But, you know, we play Philly in a couple weeks. That's not going to be easy. Philly's offense is really good. They just turned the ball over a shitload, you know. And actually, after the the Steelers game, we got to face Detroit. Detroit's offense is really fucking good, you know. And the 49ers and the Falcons. Like, we play a bunch of good offenses until we play the Giants again. Yeah, you guys have a rough schedule. Yeah, and then uh, Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence are both going to be out for a couple weeks. Um, 
I mean, the defense already sucks with them, you know, so can't, I mean, it's going to suck more without him, but the defense already fucking sucks, you know? Yeah. But yeah, um, I have a, I have a really funny story to tell about the night at the casino, but I don't know if I can tell it because I don't know who's listening. <laughs> All I'm saying is you should have been there. <laughs> yeah, I really should have. I'm just saying, uh, I'll just say somebody lost 300 bucks. Oh, oh man. Ripped it a homie. Uh, it's probably not who you're thinking of. Is it not our lovely Vikings fan? No, no, not him. I'll text it to you. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, fucking course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they put a twenty in, got up to three hundred bucks, and then lost it all. Which I so I guess really only lost twenty, but yeah, but still, that's three hundred dollars, yeah. dog. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was pretty fucking funny. <laughs> like they came back and because uh, they left in like the middle of the third quarter and came back like towards the end of the game, just had this look on their face. And I was like, what happened? And they were like, Oh, I got up to 300 bucks. I was like, hell yeah, you're buying drinks. I go, I lost it all. And me and Trevor started fucking dying laughing. And they looked like they were about to cry. (laughs) But I was just like, you learned your lesson. (laughs) You're going to listen. Go bed 10. <laughs> yeah. I, I did give uh, my rewards card to them, which is probably frowned upon uh, at the casino. But uh, so I did get some rewards points. So I benefited out of it, I guess. Yeah. You know what's stupid? Um, you don't get rewards points for doing roulette. Really? Yeah, because I had like a hundred bucks in my wallet from uh, tips and stuff from delivering. Yeah. Um, so I was like, "Shit, I'm gonna," you know, it was my birthday week, so I'm like, "I'm gonna do a fucking roulette spin." So I put a hundred bucks in. I bet twenty, bet it all on black. It was red, and then I took it out. Because <laughs> <laughs> if, if the first one don't go for you, the rest of them probably won't. Well. Come on, man. That's not the spirit of the gambler. Uh, that's the s- spirit of somebody who's smart with their fucking money. I just saw Zach's text. I'll have to join the next one. I'm staying late at work. So, looks like it's just going to be you and me <laughs> making predictions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, type out his predictions. Yeah, project. hopefully... Hopefully he gets them in before the end of the show. If he doesn't, I'll I'll read them next week. So I'll get week five pulled up. Um, I will say this week none of us did good. Uh, I went five and nine. Drew went six and eight. Zach went six and eight. Uh, there's still two games going on right now with uh, Tennessee and Miami. No one's watching that. And uh, Seattle and Detroit, which is about to be. 21 to 28 high scoring game, dude. Um, oh, Tennessee is leading Miami 22 to 6. I just saw that score. What the fuck happened? Last time I checked, it was like 3 to 9, something like that. Yeah, at halftime. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not watching. T- tell me, which would you rather watch, Tennessee and Miami or Detroit, Seattle? Well, I'm fucking watching Detroit, Seattle. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't know why they put these games on against each other because everyone's going to watch Detroit and Seattle. But some of the games we all got wrong. We all predicted Cleveland to beat Las Vegas. Las Vegas ended up winning that barely. Um, (laughs) We all predicted Pittsburgh to beat Indianapolis. Indianapolis won that barely. Uh, We all picked the Jets to beat Denver. Denver won that barely, but I'm happy Denver won. But some of the games we went with a clean sweep. Oh, and we also all picked Buffalo to beat Baltimore. And, of course, Buffalo got the living shit kicked out of them. (laughs) But we all did predict San Francisco to beat New England. That was easy. And um, 
There was another game we all predicted, and I don't see it right now. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, uh, Houston to beat Jacksonville, which was a lot closer than it should have been. Why is Seattle going for two? But, all right, adding up... Actually, I'll add up our, our totals for... Um, I'll um, add up all, our totals after these two games in, because otherwise I'm probably going to forget to do it later. Yeah. But it looks like I will still be in the lead, but barely. Actually... Um, if Detroit wins, me and Zach will be tied. Because I'll be 31 and 31, probably. But, all right. <clears throat> Let's get into week five predictions. This will probably be a lot faster this week since it's only the two of us. Week five of the NFL season kicks off on Thursday night with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta is actually favored by a point in the half. And you know what? They might as well be because uh, Baker Mayfield's arm is probably about to fall off after throwing it for 50 times against Philadelphia, which I mean, I'm glad that Tampa is finally acknowledging that their run game is fucking horrible, but also having Baker throw for that many yards on a short week, you know, not the smartest decision either, but yeah. they beat the living crap out of Philadelphia. Uh, congrats to Baker. Um, you know, I was delivering on Sunday, so I was checking the scores when I can, but I also wasn't like too crazy about it since the Cowboys weren't playing. So I go into a delivery's house to put their groceries up and I saw it was 21 to zero. Uh, Tampa leading and I went holy fucking shit and I was like oh shit I let my mouth shoot off you know <laughs> yeah. but I was I was shocked Tampa was up that much before halftime you know I'm I'm rolling with Tampa uh, Baker Mayfield I hope he will not have to throw it as much in this game hopefully Tampa can get a running game going I doubt they will because they haven't been able to get a running game going for two two years basically yeah uh, atlanta barely won that game against new orleans it's kirk cousins in prime time i know he did have a prime time win just a couple weeks ago but that was more of the eagles collapsing than kirk cousins doing anything you know uh, hopefully their duo fucking philadelphia and collapsing baby um never mind <laughs> um but yeah give me tampa yeah, I'm gonna roll with Tampa, and, and I'm pretty. Sure, I'm going to say it's gonna be a very high scoring game. Be honest. I hope so because a lot of these Thursday night games are boring. I mean, hell, I was into the last game, you know, and it was still like not the most exciting game ever. But then again, is a game with the Giants ever exciting? No. No. <laughs> All right, next game after that, New York Giants taking uh, or New York Jets. Excuse me, taking on the Minnesota Vikings, the undefeated Minnesota Vikings that just put a beat down on Jordan Love and the Green Bay Mother Love and Packers. Uh, Minnesota is favored by two and a half points. Oh, yeah, this game's in London, too, by the way. Uh, so if you want to wake up at 8 30 in the morning and watch that, uh, feel free to do so. Man, at London, like, who the hell wants to go to fucking Great Britain with those walking L's? Jamison Williams touchdown. Already? Yep. Don't call it a comeback, but I might be coming back in my fantasy football. But yeah, uh, who the fuck? Yeah, who the fuck wants to go to London? And fucking those bean and toast enjoyers. Hopefully, uh, Aaron Rodgers tries to sneak some drugs on the plane and gets arrested. You know, he tries to sneak some ayahuasca. That'd be amazing if he gets a. Arrested for being an international drug smuggler, you know? <laughs> like yeah, he's, international degenerate. Like, you see the report on ESPN Sunday morning. Aaron Rodgers was arrested before the Jets game for having 20 pounds of ayahuasca shoved up his ass. Jared, girl, still 14 to 14 right now. Yep. But, oh yeah, I guess I got to predict this game. I, I'm picking the Jets just because... Every time I, every time I pick them, they lose. Actually, so yeah, I'm picking the Jets. 
Well, I'm picking the funding uh, Vikings. I love you, Trevor. <laughs> I, hey, he's got to be happy that I keep predicting against the Vikings and they keep winning. I think he would rather I, I predict against them and uh, they win, you know? Yeah. And then uh, this game's going to be a shit show. Uh, Carolina taking on the Chicago Bears. Uh, the, basically, Carolina gets to face the team that's responsible for helping destroy their franchise. Um, they're not the biggest contributor. Uh, Dave Tepper is the biggest contributor to that. But Chicago did their part as well. Um, and if it wasn't for Carolina uh, trading their first-round pick, uh, the Bears would not be stuck with Caleb Williams right now, <laughs> which we still don't know is a good or bad thing. I'm picking Carolina to win this, though, just You're because... Carolina? Yep. I'm picking Carolina. It's back-to-back weeks. Andy Dolan has also faced one of his former teams. He faced Cincinnati last week. He gets to face Chicago this week. And um, it's at Chicago. I know the Bears are favored, but they're not favored by much. And I just got to feel – I mean, I, the Bears won last week, but they still looked like shit, you know, and Carolina – Barely lost to Cincinnati, even though it's kind of looking like Cincinnati fucking sucks. Uh, yeah, I'm going with Carolina. I'm going with Chicago. The Chicago LGBT team. <laughs> Trying to get us canceled. <laughs> hey, it's all right to paint your nails. Actually, no, it's not. There's a dude. There's a dude that would probably be a good drug smuggler. You know how much stuff Caleb Williams can probably fit in his ass. On uh, next week's topic of the podcast, we're going to get canceled. Uh, there will not be an episode next week, guys. Uh, this is the last one. I was hoping we would make it to episode sixty nine, but yeah, it's not happening. Uh, Baltimore taking on Cincinnati in Cincinnati. Uh, Baltimore coming off a dominant win against Buffalo. Cincinnati barely beating Carolina kind of spells a Baltimore win for me, even though I do not like Baltimore. But Derrick Henry has been fucking unstoppable, which is good since they don't have a quarterback that can throw more than 10 yards. And they have a trio of good running backs. You you got Lamar Jackson, you got Derrick Henry, you got Justice Hill. And only mm-hmm. if they had a quarterback. Yeah. I can't wait for them to lose to the Chiefs in the playoffs again. <laughs> yeah, give me Baltimore. Derrick Henry's going to eat that fucking defense alive. Yeah, and I mean, you bet Joe, ass, I bet him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cincinnati just, like I said, they didn't look good against Carolina either. You know, like I mean, I didn't watch the game, but I just looked at the box score. You know, so maybe if I went back and watched the highlights like a good podcaster would, uh, I'd have more analysts about it. But uh, my fucking neighborhood almost caught on fire last night. So give me a break, guys. (laughs) This game guarantees to be a snoozer. Miami taking on New England. Uh, I'm rolling with New England because Miami's offense fucking sucks no matter who's at quarterback. Um it's kind of making Tua look like an underpaid quarterback right now, even though he just got that big contract. With how bad Miami's offense has struggled without him being at the head of the table, you know, he is the tribal chief of that team. Uh, yeah, I'm not picking Miami to win shit. And New England actually is like a scrappy team. Their defense is good. Uh, Jacoby Brissett fucking sucks. I don't get what Drake May is learning by watching Jacoby Brissett get the shit kicked out of him and throw for like 100 yards a game. Probably Uh, what not to do. Yeah. But New England also has a decent running attack. And like I said, I mean, Tyree Hill and Jalen Waddell are still on the Dolphins, but they also just don't have anybody to throw to them, you know. Uh, I don't know how Tyler Huntley's doing because, again, who the fuck is watching Tennessee and Miami over Seattle and Detroit? Um, but yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm rolling with the Patriots. You know what? I'm gonna roll with Miami. Do you actually I think, believe I think that? Just, I think it's the fact they have HN and Mostert. I think that's the difference maker. But what has that done for them the last couple of weeks? 
Yeah, you have a point, but you know, I'm gonna roll Miami. All right. Guess fuck the England Patriots. They fucking deserve this. I, I don't think they really do deserve this. I mean, them winning all the Super Bowls, you know, like, I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's not like they're a team I, like, truly fucking hated. Maybe it's because they always win against teams I hated in the yeah. Super Bowls, you know. Like, they went against the Eagles. They went against um, the Giants. Um, who else did they face that I hate? Um they they faced the Rams the year the Rams knocked the Cowboys at the playoffs. Uh, they faced the Legion of Boom. You know, I didn't really like anybody on that team. So, yeah, I'm like, the Patriots were never, like, that much of a thorn in my side, you know. I couldn't really hate them because well, they always win against <laughs> Your favorite team is the AFC. My favorite team is the AFC, so it's a different story. Yeah, that's true. But you guys were never in the fucking playoffs to begin with when New England was – Having their run of dominance, you know? We started their dominance. Yeah. That was just because you guys suck. Because we got fucked over. Nah. You guys still would have lost. Hey, you guys had a whole overtime to make up for that. <laughs> just, just admit it. Whatever. Raiders are better than the Cowboys. In the story. What the fuck ever? You guys barely beat the Browns. We beat the shit out of them. That's fine. Speaking of the Browns. It's okay. Not everyone can be a Raiders fan. Speaking of the Browns, are we picking them to uh, lose to Washington? Oh, hell yeah. Fucking J Daniel's fucking... Dude, he's balling. He's fucking balling. He's, he's... He is the CJ Stroud this year. He is way better than I thought he was going to be. Looks like fucking Chicago dumbass. Yeah. I know Jane Daniels. I mean, he. But then again, it. Look at RG three, his rookie year. He he was actually playing better than Andrew Luck. You know, I mean. Yeah, but this is a lot better organization than it was like there in that time. They don't yeah. have a fucking shitty ass owner and Jay Gruden's Jay Gruden. <laughs> well, that back then it was Mike Shanahan. Oh, was when it? they first got, yeah, when they first got RG three, yeah, it was Mike Shanahan and Jay Gruden. Oh, Geno Smith just fumbled. I see how recovered it. Um, I think Jay Gruden came along in like twenty fourteen, yeah, twenty fourteen, and they drafted RG three in twenty twelve. Indianapolis and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, looks like Anthony Richardson's all right. He just has some hip soreness. Um. They should have checked him for brain damage because with the rate that this dude's turning the fucking ball over, there's got to be something wrong with that dude. He's got to have some form of retardation, uh, but not as bad as Tony Khan and Chad Khan, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're just full retard. And um, it looks like Joe Flacco still has it. Yeah, I know. He, 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 you know, held Pittsburgh off. You know, I mean... Joe Flacco's like what fucking eighty and still playing good. Yeah, and take it to fucking Flacco and know how to beat Pittsburgh. If I was Indy, I'd roll with Flacco because Richardson's just not ready. He fucking sucks, and he's fucking injury prone. Yeah, like if you ain't ready for Jackson, you might as well roll with Flacco. Yeah, but I am picking the Colts to win just because Jacksonville fucking sucks. I'm going to roll with India as well, and I'm pretty sure this will be the game that Doug Pearson gets fired. You know, if they get the shit kicked out of them, I can definitely see that happening. Um, Who do they play next week? Like, if they're on a bye next week or something, I oh, know they play. Oh, they play in London next week, so they may not fire their coach with a international trip, but uh, uh, they'll probably the have the Khan family there. <laughs> that is true. The Khan family is fucking stupid oh man why is this game on at 12 o'clock in the afternoon this should be prime motherfucking time buffalo taking on houston stefan Diggs revenge game yeah watch him only get 10 yards <laughs> yeah as i say look at how the revenge game against the vikings went um not that good 
And then, you know, Houston barely beat Jacksonville, but Buffalo just got the shit kicked out of them. I still like Buffalo a lot, though. I like Houston, too. I mean, I still think the AFC championship is going to be Houston and Kansas City. Um, But I I think Buffalo is going to win, and uh, Stephon Diggs is going to learn he's not that special because Josh Allen's doing just fine without him. I'm going to roll with the Houston Texans. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame. It's it's a hard game to call, really. Yeah. I mean, Houston's only favored by a point and a half, and I think that's just because they're the home team, you know? Yeah. And and Buffalo's coming off getting the shit kicked out of them. But, I mean, Josh Allen's still fucking breathing, you know? So as long as he's playing, you know, I I feel like I got to predict them. Yeah, Houston, you have, you know, Nico Collins, and I mean, yeah, they still have Stephon Diggs and CJ Stroud. And I'm pretty sure Joe Mixon should be back. I don't know. But even yeah. still. Did he play last game? I don't know. Uh, but, you I'm, know, Buffalo has fucking Josh on his 12 inch cock. Yeah. And James Cook. Like, don't count James Cook out. He's fucking uh, good. Yeah, dude. yeah. He's, he actually is pretty damn good. Yeah. You know how much I would want for him to be on the Cowboys right now. So, yeah, Joe Mixon did not play last game. Uh, Cam Akers was the lead back, 13 carries, 53 yards, 4.4 yards a carry. Not too bad, but could be better. I mean, that's what you kind of expect from your second string, really. Yeah. Now with my second string, I expect Ezekiel Elliott to get one yard and fucking lean forward and go. He's just telling you he's hungry. Yeah, he's always fucking hungry. Look at that fat motherfucker. You know what's funny? So I was watching Naruto on my on lunch break. Yeah. I'm at the episode of two fat guys and out of the prison break. I was like, <laughs> God damn, was that goddamn Ziggle Elliot out there? I've been uh, just having Naruto on as background noise. Like, yeah. I had Naruto on last night when that fire and shit was going on, and uh, I was watching the um, preliminaries. For the tuning yeah. exam, um, I want to say it was um, it was uh, Hinata and Neji that was going on whenever that fire started. Ooh, that's yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah, it is a great fight. Like people don't talk about that fight. Like I don't know, people hate on Neji, dude. Like I think Neji's one of the coolest fucking characters. Him and Gara has like the best character development. Yeah, I. Like, cause people always say like Neji's fight against. I mean, I guess Neji's fights had a lot of uh, talking in them, you know, and maybe that made people think they were boring. But as a fan of professional wrestling, storytelling is key. So, them telling a story during the fight with uh, Neji, you know, actually kind of makes me like these fights, you know. So I don't mind all the talking during the Neji fights because, like, the fight against Hinata, there was a shitload of talking. But, you know, it also had a shitload of Taijutsu. And, I, yeah, that is a very underrated fight. And people always say, like I said, the fight between him and Naruto sucks. I think that's one of the best fights in the series. Yeah. Oh, shit, my headphones die. Hello? Uh, I think my headphones died. Oh, shit. Yep, they're dead. <laughs> Let me go grab my other ones out my car real quick. But since Cody's gone, fucking the Dallas Cowboys are the most overrated team in the NFL, and they fucking suck. And I'm pretty sure they're going to lose to Pittsburgh. And we're going to come to the next episode <laughs> with a fucking depressed Cowboys fan. That's That's my take for right now. And the Las Vegas Raiders are better than the Cowboys. What'd you talk about? Oh, uh, uh, nothing. <laughs> Did you call me a faggot or something? No, you, you'll figure out when you go back over it. <laughs> You're a fucking bitch. Um, <laughs> but uh, before I got interrupted by that, um, thank God that was like an hour deep and not like at the beginning of the podcast. Um, Naruto versus Neji, like, think about like in a 40 episode span. You had Rock Lee versus Gara. You had Naruto versus Neji. You had Naruto versus Gara, all within like forty episodes of each other. Yeah, and then the debut of Itachi and Kasame, and um, 
and hell within a, like a 50 episode span you had the the Sanin showdown with Sanade, Jiraiya, and Orochimaru which was also a very underrated fight yeah Naruto's the best series ever you One Piece fans can suck my fucking dick go watch your fucking thousand episodes of fillers <laughs> Uh, Trevor's gonna be so mad. <laughs> uh, did we talk about your game? No, uh, we have not. not. Las Vegas versus Denver. I'll let you have the floor on this one. That's why I should uh, had you do while I was grabbing my fucking headphones. So here's the thing: if we don't have Devontae Adams, I think we'll still be okay. Be real with you, because straight talkers actually kind of. Did a pretty well job on being a second string wide receiver. It looks like Jacoby can be our legit number one. Now, like I said, we should trade Adams. The biggest thing for the Las Vegas Raiders, this I, I honestly I think this would be a good game to start AOC. I know it's a tough defense, but same time as it's fucking Denver Broncos. They're mentally stay like with a fucking white girl with pumpkin spice coffee. It's not like he hasn't faced them before. You know, he faced them last year. Yeah. But, um, I mean, if Max Crosby plays, and I think it would be easy win for us, because that def- Denver's offensive line fucking sucks. They're worse than ours, and that kind of makes me more confident. But the yeah. biggest thing is, I think... We need to roll Madison as a lead back for this game. Because we clearly cannot rely on our pass game. If we get our run game going for once, they can help either AOC if he actually does start or fucking mid shoe. So, has there been rumors about AOC starting this game? There has been quite a bit. From dumbass Raiders fans on Facebook or like actual reporters? Um, dumbass Raiders and um, like insiders from the Raiders. Mm. Like, um, like well known, well respected insiders. Um, I'm gonna regret this. I'm gonna roll with Las Vegas. Uh, just uh, <laughs> Just to be the contrarian, and I actually do kind of think Denver might win since they just beat the Jets, and the Jets kind of have a similar defense to you guys. Well, actually, I think the Jets' defense is a little better. Um, and um, the only thing is you guys have the better quarterback than the Jets do. Uh, that's the thing where I think Denver might struggle. But I am a believer. I have a boner right now for the Broncos. And uh, I'll pick the Broncos to win. Like, yeah, I can't really be mad because I don't, I don't blame you, dude. It is weird going outside to my car to grab my headphones, and after how fucking crazy it was last night, it's so fucking quiet. Yeah, give it's about kinda... give about like thirty more minutes. It'll get some meth heavy running down the road. Yeah, they live like two houses down. Arizona taking on San Francisco. I'm going with San Francisco. Uh, they're only getting healthier by the week, you know. So, and Arizona just got the shit kicked out of them by Washington. But I also think that says more about Washington than it does Arizona. And I, I, I don't know. I just I have a feeling San Francisco is going to win. I think they, they got their groove back after because they had lost two straight, you know, but. They had a good right game with the Patriots, you know, and there's I one thing to forget about. Carmer is black. <laughs> oh, Nick Bosa, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> or yeah, oh, as God. the election gets closer, Nick Nick Bosa's superpowers start activating. Nick Bosa's sees a black quarterback and black officer comes out next month. Carmer is about to have a good old time. <laughs> Oh, if I'm an Arizona fan, I'll be mad right now. <laughs> I wish somebody would make a like an AI generated thing with Nick Bosa and uh, have it like how Hulk Hogan was at the convention a couple months ago, where he's like, and then he took a shot at my hero. I wish they would do that with Nick Bosa. <laughs> and uh, 
and Max Crosby. He's been hanging out with uh, you know who too. But well, Max I, Crosby uh, is like that white guy. He thinks he's black. <laughs> uh, I know a few of those. We went to school with one of them, and yeah, uh, you were kind of acting like him earlier. Man, I will fucking burn your house down. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Not cool. <laughs> yeah, it's not fucking not cool you just say either. I think that's even. I know. You know, I'll probably confuse Zach. and Well, tr- Zach probably got it, actually. So you're picking San Francisco to win? Oh, yeah. All right. Green Bay taking on the L.A. Rams. The L.A. Rams. That was just an excuse to use that clip. Looks like Jordan Love is now back as the starter for the Ram or for the Packers, excuse me. And uh looks like he came back a little bit too soon because he looked like shit against the Vikings. But yeah, then they, they also kept Malik Wilson is let Love rested. That was just dumb. But then they also started coming back though. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean part of that was I mean, Jordan Love's fucking good, and the Vikings kind of started to self-destruct a little bit. I mean, they still pulled it out and won, but they did not play good in that second half. You know, they were starting to self-destruct, and they got lucky to walk away with that win. And the Rams, Cooper Cup's hurt, Puka Nakua's hurt, Stafford's old, Kyron Williams really hasn't had, like, the greatest start to his sophomore campaign. Plus, isn't he hurt too? I don't fucking know. Everybody's hurt on the uh, L.A. Rams. Yeah, uh, I'm going to the- Cooper Cub will come back to next week. And Puka Nakua is not coming back for a couple of weeks still, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm rolling with the Packers here. Uh as much as I hate to say it, I, I think the Packers are really fucking good. The yeah, only thing is... They, it's, it's it's pretty legit. The Packers defense? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Xavier McKinney... Weak for um, for um, turnovers. They're pretty close, because Xavier McKinney's had an interception in every game that he's played yeah, so and, far. Um, Jair Alexander. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Packers... I mean, their offense is pretty good, too. Um, I said I thought it was kind of stupid that they rushed um, Jordan Love back, and then Josh Jacobs really didn't do shit, but Josh Jacobs fucking sucks. Yeah, if anything, this uh, would have been the game to bring Josh. I mean, yeah, fucking Jordan Love back. Yeah, I, I, I just really like the Packers, even though it makes my fucking skin crawl to say it. Give me the Green Bay mother-loving Packers. Shout out, Tom Grossi. All right, then... This game, uh, this is going to be easy. Giants versus Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, Seattle. Do we even tell you to talk about this? No, Seattle's hanging in right now with one of the best teams in the NFL. And then the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, Pittsburgh finally lost last week. They were undefeated until they ran into the Indianapolis Colts. Pittsburgh's actually favored by two and a half. Uh, Dallas is going to get a week and a half to rest, which hopefully you, they use that time to uh, search the streets of Dallas and find a decent running back. Dak Prescott, I think, will have a decent game, but he's also going to be under a lot of pressure. Our fucking line sucks. Tyler Guyton has not played good so far this year. Um, he's leading the league in penalties. Cooper Beebe's a really undersized center. Uh, at least the right side of the line is good um, with Terrence Still and Zach Martin, but that left side, Guyton isn't playing good. Tyler Smith is a fucking penalty machine, and Beebe's just not big enough to be a center. He needs to put on some weight. And then Pittsburgh's offense is kind of uh, anemic with... Najee Harris, who's a decent running back, but he's not, like, the best, you know, but the Cowboys will make him look like God, you know? Yeah. Um, Plus, they also got that other dude, uh, Warren, I think his name is. Their backup running back, he's pretty good. Uh, They got George Pickens and another receiver I can't remember. Uh, Pat Firemuth is a good tight end, but I think we'll have him on lockdown. 
it looks like Justin Fields will still be the starter. I think he's going to end up being the starter for the whole year. I think if Dallas wants to win, they're going to have to incorporate the quick passing game because you got TJ Watt and the other outside linebacker, both of them great blitzers, both of them great off the edge. That's going to be a pain in the ass for the Cowboys to try to scheme around when the offensive line isn't that good and you don't really have a good running back at um, as a blocker. You know, I mean Zeke's decent, but still like nothing special. Uh, he's not what he was, and so Jake Ferguson will kind of have to stay on that line and chip those linebackers to kind of delay him. So expect Ferguson to probably be lined up on the left side of the line a lot, so he can t- chip T.J. Watt off the edge and try to help Guyton out, which would also open up the quick passing game if um, Jake Ferguson's doing that quick little chip and just running a short route, you know. That's how the Cowboys can win this game and hopefully move the ball. But I'm still pit- picking Pittsburgh to win. To be real with you, I think Pittsburgh's going to kick the living shit out of Dallas. I think it's going to be a very ugly game for Dallas. Because you guys have no oh. ugly game. It's like one of the best defenses in the league. I'm going to roll with Pittsburgh. Not only that, I feel like Justin Fields is about to cook the, the um, Dallas' defense. Yeah, with his running ability, uh, I am very worried about that. And he's actually been a pretty efficient passer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're not asking him to do too much, you know? Yeah. Yeah. God, I wish Zach was on this podcast so I could talk about this. New Orleans Saints taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, New Orleans, losers of two straight after going 2-0 and and emptying the chamber against the Dallas Cowboys because the Cowboys are every team's fucking Super Bowl. Everybody plays their best against the Cowboys because it's a big stage. A lot of people don't like the Cowboys. Everybody always goes all out against the Cowboys. And that's what New Orleans did. They looked because they played the Panthers week one. The Panthers fucking suck. And then they went all out against the Cowboys. And now they're about to drop down to reality because they've lost two straight. They're about to lose three straight. Kansas City's going to kick the shit out of them on Monday Night Football. Um, I, like I said, I wish Zach was here so me and him could argue about it. But that being said, Kansas City is also every team's Super Bowl too. But uh, that Kansas City is also a way better team than the Cowboys are even though they probably are going to be without Rasheed Rice for the rest of the season. All right, here's my fucking wild prediction of the week. Who that? Who that? Who that nation? Going with New Orleans Saints. Christian, I know you're listening to this podcast, dude. I'm sorry I've picked against your team three straight weeks in a row. Uh, No, I think I picked you all to beat... Uh, Eagles, but that's more because I hate the Eagles. And I do think you guys are a good team, but I also think you guys are kind of going to go through a rough patch right now and hopefully we'll uh, figure it out towards the end of the season because they can still be a wild card contender. You know, they're going to have to fight it out with Atlanta because right now it's looking like Tampa's going to win the that division. Yeah, the only thing about like New Orleans and Kansas City, like Kansas City just lost Rice for the year. Yeah. And um, Alvin Kamara looks like he's back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's had a good year. Kansas City is just a team I don't bet against. I don't bet against Mahomes. Well, I mean, I'm gonna, two... you won't catch me fucking bet every fucking time. If I lose, I lose. But I'm a fucking Raiders fan to the day I die. When are you going to acknowledge him as the tribal chief? He is the greatest quarterback ever. No. He's not the comparison to the man himself, Nathan Peterman. You should you should go on Twitter and look at the catch on Monroe St. Brown just made. Oh, I just fucking lost. <laughs> uh, like the guy have on St. Brown? Yeah, he has St. Brown and fucking Dave Montgomery. Ah, oh, shit. Well, I'm down by 18 now. And actually, it'll be a little bit less because... Um, Come on, it man. It's a fourth quarter. Why we'll are passing the ball? Because <laughs> it's a competitive game. That's why. 
Jared Goff still has yet to throw an incompletion, by the way. 18 of 18 now. Fucking God damn it. I'm, going I'm down by work. 11. I'm down by 11 points. I need them to score like one more time. And if he threw it to like Jamison Williams or Sam Laporta, I would win. But all right, everybody, that's week five of uh, predictions. Uh, Zach will be on the show next week. He had to work late tonight. That is why he's not joining us. I almost thought about doing this podcast tomorrow, too, just because I was so wore out, you know, but that nap kind of rejuvenized me. Uh, Detroit, Tennessee, Philadelphia, and the Chargers are all on a bye this week. Well, back-to-back weeks of four teams being on bye weeks. So uh, back-to-back weeks of us predicting uh, 14 games instead of 16, which I'll take. Even though uh, this podcast is kind of fucking long. (laughs) (laughs) But we also had a big story at the beginning and a few other big stories actually to talk about. Uh, This podcast will be out on Wednesday this week, which I guess if you guys made it to the end of this, you guys would already know that because you'd be listening to it on Wednesday. Um, Monday night, the night we're recording this, my WWE Bad Blood Predictions video will be out. Um, Excited for Drew McIntyre and CM Punk inside Hell in a Cell. That's going to be a great match, dude. Um, And Rhea versus Liv, because their match at SummerSlam was really fucking good, so I'm looking forward to that match, too. Uh, Is there any match you're looking forward to at Bad Blood? Um... Probably Rhea versus Liv. That's just so you can jerk off during the match. Oh, you have no idea, man. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's going to be a good match. Dominic Mysterio is going to be suspended above the ring in a shark cage. Which I wonder how that's going to work. Like, Are they going to attach the the shark cage to the Hell in the Cell, you know? Or are they going to have like a little like elevated platform that Dominic's going to be hanging from? You know, yeah. I don't know. I'm in, I'm interested to see how that works. How they rig all that up. Um, next week, Gunther will be defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Sami Zayn on Monday Night Raw. So Raw next week is going to be a pretty big show. And uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else going on in the world of wrestling. Jay Uso. Oh yeah, he won the Intercontinental. Yeah, he won the Intercontinental Championship. Seriously, right when we stopped recording last week, that was like me and Drew. We were talking after we got done, and I was like, "Holy shit, Jay Uso won!" <laughs> And I had forgotten that match had taken place. I had gotten on Twitter, and uh, they they uploaded the full match on YouTube. If you guys haven't seen it, you should check it out. That match was really fucking good. It's he he deserved it. He deserves it. Yeet. I need to get that as a sound clip on here next to yeah. I just have yeah, yeet, and what? <laughs> what? 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 Go get a hell yeah. Hell yeah. Austin 316. Oh. Have you watched Vince McMahon's documentary yet? Not on yet. Netflix? You need to fucking watch it, dude. It's fucking good. I probably will Friday. Hey, you have six hours to spare. Watch all of it. Um, but yeah, very, very much recommend that uh, documentary to anyone that's either a wrestling fan or if you're not a wrestling fan, you'll learn a lot watching that uh, documentary. Oh, excuse me. Um, I also recommend listening to Jim Cornette's reviews of them as well after each episode because he adds a lot of context to it. I wish Jim Cornette would have been on there because you know he's a great wrestling historian. Uh, so yeah, I wish Jim Cornette was on the Vince McMahon documentary. That's the only like complaint I had against it. Other than that, I thought it was very good. All right, guys. That's the podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Say no to premarital sex and drugs. Hope you guys have a great week. We will see you guys next time for week six NFL predictions. And uh, I really hope I don't have a crazy story next week because <laughs> I thought that was crazy enough. That took up 15 minutes. I don't want to come on the show next week and be like, oh, hey, I saw a 10-car pile, pile up on the highway. <laughs>
But uh, hopefully next week I'll be able to play this. How about him, Cowboy? See you next week.